Welcome to our video on Windows 7. We're going to be discussing configuring mobile computing. We're going to talk about configuring BitLocker and BitLocker to go, direct access, offline files, power plans, and remote connections. BitLocker is a technology that allows you to encrypt the entire hard drive and the idea is that if the hard drive is stolen or if the computer is stolen then the contents would not be able to be used by the person who stole it. They would have to at least format the drive and even if they got your hardware they wouldn't get your data. You definitely want to know that it's only available in Enterprise and Ultimate. It also can be used with a trusted platform module, a TPM chip that would store the BitLocker key. You can use it without the TPM chip but the best way to do it is with the TPM chip and you also should know that the keys can be stored in Active Directory. As you'll see when we configure BitLocker there are multiple BitLocker modes. There's TPM only where the keys just stored on this TPM chip that's on the motherboard. It has to be present on the motherboard and enabled and what that does is if somebody steals the computer and they remove the hard drive from that computer then the hard drive won't work. This isn't the best mode because if they steal the computer and they just leave the hard drive in it it'll just start up because the computer will look for the TPM chip, the TPM chip will be there and it'll start just fine. So you would ideally want to choose one of the other methods. So TPM with a startup key means that you'd have to have a USB drive or something that has that startup key on it that would have to be plugged into the machine when the computer starts. Of course then you're going to have to educate your users not to leave the startup key with the machine if it's a laptop. Or you could do a TPM with a PIN where the user has to type in some type of a PIN or password when the computer boots. Um, ideally, you know, in a, the most secure option would be TPM with a PIN and a startup key. That way they have to plug in that USB drive and type in a PIN to get it to start up. If your computer does not have a TPM ch key, uh, chip in it, you're going to have to go with BitLocker without a TPM. In that case, you can conf configure either a startup key, meaning that USB drive, or a PIN, or, or both. So we're going to take a look at configuring BitLocker, um, configuring a BitLocker data recovery agent, and a quick look at the command line uh, utility to configure BitLocker, which is manage-bde. And you want to at least be familiar with that. Whenever you see manage BDE, you want to think BitLocker. To configure BitLocker, I want to go into Control Panel. So I'm going to click on my Start button, click on Control Panel, System and Security, BitLocker Drive Encryption. And you can see that BitLocker goes by the volume. I actually only have one hard drive in my computer, but I have it divided into two volumes. So I can configure BitLocker separately for each volume. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on BitLocker for the D drive. Comes up and it prompts me. I can choose how I want to unlock the drive. I can provide a password, which we'll go ahead and do that. Or I can use a smart card, which is an external device that has a certificate on it, where my smart card PIN will be required to unlock the drive, or I can automatically unlock this drive. This particular computer does not have a TPM chip on it. So if I had one, I might have a little bit different options available to me, but as long as you understand the idea of a TPN and whether there's a chip or not, um, or me, whether there's a password or a USB device, then you're pretty much good to go. So I click Next. Now, for once you encrypt the, the drive using BitLocker, there's a recovery key. And the idea behind it is this. If you lose your password, forget your password, you use the recovery key to access the drive. Or if BitLocker boots up and detects that the drive's been messed with a little bit, maybe it's been moved or moved to a different computer and it's come back or something like that, then you would go into recovery mode and you would need that recovery key. I can actually save it to a flash drive, save it to a file, or even print it out. So we'll go ahead and save it to a file. You want to be aware of the recovery key because that's important. If the drive had been compromised in any way, it would actually take me into the BitLocker recovery mode and then I'd use that key to recover the drive. 
Uh, you also want to be aware that if you do have a situation where your drive has been compromised and you have to go into BitLocker recovery mode, you don't want to try and recover the drive using the normal startup recovery off the CD-ROM, uh, the DVD-ROM, because that will actually completely kill the drive. You have to go into that BitLocker recovery mode. That's important. You ready to encrypt the drive? Sure. Let's go ahead and start encrypting. And this actually takes quite a bit of time. So we're going to come back in a minute when it's all done. While we're waiting for the drive to encrypt, we'll take a look at assigning a BitLocker data recovery agent. So I'm going to go into my Microsoft Management Console. So just to cl click on Start, type in MMC. We're going to add or remove a snap-in, and the one that we need is the Group Policy Object Editor. and we'll open that up we want to go into computer configuration windows settings security settings open up public key policies because this is the branch that has to do with encryption and we're actually encrypting the entire drive so you can see bitlocker drive encryption here and this is where I assign my data recovery agent I have to have a recovery certificate that I can use for this. So you have to use cipher slash R to generate the recovery certificate. We talked about that in a different lesson on the encrypted file system. So I'm going to go in actually and right click and add a data recovery agent. Welcome to the wizard. Yep, next. And now I have to specify that certificate. So I'm going to browse for it. And I created mine in a directory called RA. So here's the certificate. And because I actually use my personal computer to generate this certificate, the computer can't tell whether it's been revoked or not because it doesn't come from a normal certificate authority. But I'm going to go ahead and say yes, install it. If you're in an enterprise environment with Active Directory, you probably want to install a certificate authority and generate the certificates that way. But for a standalone machine, Cypher slash R will work just fine. So I hit finish, and here's my BitLocker recovery agent. Now we can also take a look at the manage-bde command line utility. So I'll go out to my command line and I'm just going to do a manage-bde forward slash question mark. That'll show you all the different things that you can do. So I can get status about drives, I can turn the drives on or off, pause the encryption or decryption, resume it, uh, lock the drive, unlock the drive, and so on and so forth. You don't have to memorize all these switches, but you should know that there is a command line utility for this, and it's called manage.bde or manage-bde.